Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the ninth lecture on the topic impact of jet on curved veins. In this lecture, we will be discussing the case of a tangential jet impinging on a series of curved veins mounted on a wheel. Accordingly, at the end of this lecture, you will be able to calculate the impact of a jet and the corresponding work done if a tangential jet impinges on a series of curved veins mounted on a wheel. So, in this lecture, first we will see the how do we derive the expression for the force exerter or how do we derive the expression for the impact of a tangential jet on a series of curved vein and later on we will see the expression for the work done by the jet. Before I start, let us quickly glance through what we have discussed in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we discussed the case of a tangential jet entering a curved vein and the vein is moving with the velocity u and in this case the velocity of the jet and the vein are not in the same direction. In that case the impact of the jet and the corresponding expression for the output power generator are derived or expressed in terms of the relative velocity vr where in this case the relative velocity is obtained by drawing the velocity triangle. We have also discussed the expression for the efficiency of the jet where efficiency is the output power developed per unit time divided by input kinetic energy per unit time. Input kinetic energy is the kinetic energy of the jet coming out from the nozzle which is half rho a v q. When we discuss the case of a single moving vein, we have seen that the force exerted by the jet on the vein is expressed in terms of the relative velocity. So, f x is rho a v r into v w plus or minus v w 1, where v w and v w 1 are the velocity of word at the inlet and the outlet respectively and this can be obtained by drawing the velocity triangle. But we need to see when can we apply this and when we cannot apply this. So, this is the case only if u is equal to u 1 that is velocity of the vein at the inlet is equal to outlet which is generally valid in case of a single moving vein. But when we have a series of veins mounted on a wheel, let us see how it looks like. So, this is the case. So, you have a wheel, on the wheel there are a series of uh, veins mounted, all curved veins, water enters tangentially at the inlet and goes through the vein and comes out at the uh, center of the wheel. So, in this case if this is the direction of flow, if this is the direction of flow, we can say that this is a radial flow, water enters from the outer periphery, goes through the veins and collected at the inner periphery. A typical example is here, you can see a series of veins mounted on a wheel. So, water enters from here, moves through the vein and collected at the outlet. So, this becomes a case of a radial flow vein. And in this case, the flow is normal to the axis of rotation, say in this case, this wheel is rotating uh, in the plane of this slide and its axis of rotation through the center is perpendicular to the plane of the side, slide. So, the flow is taking place in the plane of this slide and the axis of rotation is perpendicular to the slide. So, flow is normal to the axis of rotation or in this case, you can see the axis of rotation is vertical and the flow is taking place in a plane perpendicular to that. So, when this flow is taking place, say this is the inlet and this is the outlet of the vein. So, the distance this is here is the axis of rotation. So, distance of the inlet and the outlet are different from the axis of rotation. And when this distance are different, you can see that this wheel is rotating with the same angular velocity, whether you consider the inlet tip or outlet tip, it is moving with a con, uh, constant or it is moving with the same angular velocity. So, if you consider a unit time, say this out inlet edge has to move this much distance, whereas the outlet will be moving only this much distance. So, the distance travelled by the inlet tip and the outlet tip are different, which means that the tangential velocity of the vein at the inlet and at the outlet are different. 
Also, this involved rotation of the wheel. Therefore, rather than considering the impulsive force exerted by the jet, we will be talking about the torque and the rotational effect produced by the impact of the jet. And in this case, because of these properties that we have discussed, it involves a change in angular momentum of the fluid. Therefore, this torque and the change in angular momentum are considered to uh, calculate the effect of this jet on the wheel. This kind of radial flow wheels are widely used in hydraulic machines. A typical example is a Francis turbine where the runner of the turbine consists of a series of curved vanes mounted on a wheel and this is kept inside a spiral casing. So water enters the uh, curved vein from the outer periphery of the wheel and flows through the vein and is collected at the center of the runner. This flow of water makes the runner rotate which converts the hydraulic energy into mechanical energy. Details of the performance or working of the pelt Francis turbine will be covered in the next unit. As I just mentioned, in case of such radial flow wheels, rather than the impulsive force and the change in linear momentum, what we consider is the rotational effect that is torque and cha change in angular momentum. Therefore, the impulse momentum principle can be expressed as the torque is equal to rate of change of angular momentum. Now let us see what are this torque and the angular momentum that we are discussing. Torque is the rotational tendency produced by a force. So for example, in this case you have a wheel and if a force is applied at this point at the outer periphery tangential to the wheel and if this is the point of application of the force, this force make the wheel rotate about an axis of rotation which passes through its center and this axis of rotation is perpendicular to the plane of the slide. So the torque is given by this force multiplied by the unit vector to the point where the force is acting, force multiplied by the unit vector or magnitude of this torque is given by, magnitude of torque is represented as tau, uh, Greek letter tau that is given by the magnitude of the force F multiplied by the distance of the point of application from the axis of rotation. So if you consider the case of a wheel where the force is applied tangentially at its outer periphery, magnitude of the torque produced is given by magnitude of this force multiplied by the radius of the wheel. And we know the unit of uh, the force and the distance and therefore the unit of torque is Newton meter. Now let us see what is angular momentum. We have seen what is tangential momentum. Tangential momentum is the product of mass and tangential velocity m into v tangential. Whereas angular momentum L is equal to moment of inertia multiplied by angular velocity. Moment of inertia is represented as I, angular velocity is omega. Angular velocity is the angle traversed per unit time. So consider in this case a wheel of radius r and it has moved through an angle d theta over a time dt. It has moved, it has rotated through an angle d theta over a time dt. Therefore, angular velocity of this wheel is given by angular velocity is given by the angle that is traversed per unit time. So angle traversed is d theta during the time dt that is angular velocity. What is tangential velocity? Tangential velocity is the linear distance travelled. Tangential velocity which is v tangential that is given by when the wheel rotate through an angle d theta that linear distance traversed by this is this distance ds. Therefore, the tangential velocity is given by ds by dt that linear distance travel per unit time. So now let us consider the relation between ds and d theta. This is a wheel of radius r and the ds is the arc of a circle 
d theta d s is the uh, arc of a circle which subtends at angle d theta at its center r is the radius of the arc. So, in that case d s is given by r into d theta. Therefore, we can write that tangential velocity v tangential is equal to d s by d t instead of s let us substitute r d theta. So, r into d theta divided by d t or r into d theta divided by d t where d theta by d t is omega or it is r omega that is tangential velocity is equal to r omega. If tangential velocity is r omega we can write that angular velocity omega is equal to v tangential divided by the radius of the v. That is the relation between tangential velocity and angular velocity. Tangential velocity is the radius multiplied by angular velocity or angular velocity is equal to the tangential velocity divided by the radius. Next we have this moment of inertia. What is moment of inertia? Moment of inertia which is represented as I is the second moment of the mass that is mass multiplied by the square of the distance. Here we are talking about the mass moment of inertia which is the second moment of the mass. So, mass multiplied by distance square. Therefore, I can say that from this expression angular momentum L is equal to moment of inertia multiplied by angular velocity that is mass into r square into angular velocity is tangential velocity multiplied by r. So, by eliminating the common term this becomes m into r into v tangential. In this you have this term m and v tangential mass into the tangential velocity is the tangential momentum. Therefore, angular momentum is equal to tangential momentum multiplied by the radius of rotation. Angular momentum is equal to tangential momentum multiplied by the radius of rotation. That I can write that angular momentum L is equal to the tangential momentum that is m into v tangential multiplied by the radius of rotation. Thus in case of a rotating wheel the angular momentum is given by tangential momentum multiplied by the radius of rotation. Now let us see how to derive the expression for this tangential momentum and hence the angular momentum and hence the torque. So, in this case you have a uh, wheel with a series of fins mounted on it. So, I can draw this like this. You have these two lines are of the wheel, these two lines are of the wheel, you can see the wheel here and there are a series of veins. So, these all are the veins mounted on the wheel and water enters the wheel at its uh, outer periphery tangentially glide through the wheel and comes out at the inner periphery. So, this is the inlet, this is the outlet, this is the absolute velocity of the jet at the inlet, this is the absolute velocity of the jet at the outlet. So, in this case the radius of the inlet and outlet are different. You can see the radius of the inlet, inlet is now the outer periphery. So, this radius is r radius of the inlet whereas the radius of the outlet that is the inner periphery this radius is the radius at the outlet r1. r and r1 are the radial of the wheel at the inlet and the outlet respectively. And this wheel makes n rotations per minute that is constant whether you talk about the outer periphery or the inner periphery the wheel make, makes n rotations per minute or the angular velocity is the same at the inlet tip 
or the outlet tip and we know that each rotation is through 360 degree or through 2 pi degrees therefore n rotations means n into 2 pi is the angle that is covered and therefore this is covered in 60 seconds because n is the number of rotations per minute the wheel makes n rotations in 60 seconds or in 1 minutes n rotations mean n into 2 pi degrees in 60 seconds therefore the angular velocity is given by the angle cover that is 2 pi n divided by the time during which the angle is covered so 2 pi n by 60 and its unit will be radians per seconds that is a unit of angular velocity so if you know the number of rotations of the wheel per minute that is n we can calculate the angular velocity omega as 2 pi n by 60 radians per second and remember this angular velocity remains constant both at the inlet tip or at the outlet tip or anywhere along the wing. Now Vw and Vw1 are the velocity of whirl at the inlet and outlet respectively. In this case the vane is moving in this direction from left to right. So Vw in this case is also from left to right but Vw1 is in the negative direction. Uh, that we have seen earlier also in the case of a single moving way. Now in this case the mass flow rate that is mass flowing per unit time is given by mass density multiplied by the volume flow rate or mass density multiplied by the discharge and it is also represented as ma this is mass, mass is weight divided by acceleration due to gravity where W is the weight flowing per unit time divided by the acceleration due to gravity. Now to find the tangential momentum we need to know the tangential velocity which can be calculated by drawing the velocity triangle. So let us see how do we draw the velocity triangle. So as I mentioned earlier these two blue lines are represent the wheel and these are the vanes mounted on the wheel. Capital R is the radius of the wheel at the inlet, R1 is the radius of the wheel at the outlet. In this case we are talking about an inward flowing vane that is inlet is at the outer periphery, outlet is the inner periphery therefore R is greater than R1. Now the water or the jet of water is entering the vane with the velocity V. Jet of water is entering the vane with the velocity V where capital V represents the absolute velocity of the jet at the inlet and the vane is moving from left to right. So the tangential velocity of the vane at the inlet tip is in this direction which is the direction of the tangent at the inlet and it is represented as u. The jet makes an angle alpha with the direction of motion of the vane or with the direction of the tangent at the inlet and alpha is known as the jet angle at the inlet. Now at the inlet we can complete the velocity triangle when we know v and u. So starting from the tip of u to the tip of v we can draw the vector which represents the relative velocity at the inlet. And relative velocity when the jet enters the vane tangentially without any shock at the inlet or without, without any shock at the inlet vr is tangential to the vane and it glides through the vane and if there is some losses taking place if there are some losses taking place as the water glides through the vane, the outlet velocity, the relative velocity with which the water is coming out of the vane will be different from Vr and in this case that is represented as Vr1 and we assume that water leaves the vane tangentially. Accordingly, we can mark the direction of Vr and Vr1 as theta and phi where theta is the inlet vane angle, phi is the vane angle at the outlet. And the outlet tip of the vane as we have seen the outlet tip of the vane will be moving with a different tangential velocity u1. The angular velocity of the inlet tip and the outlet tip will be the same but since the radii are different the tangential velocity that is the tangential distance moved by the outlet tip will be less than that moved by the inlet tip or the tangential velocity of the outlet tip will be different from that of the inlet tip. So in this case this is marked as u1. 
when you know vr1 and u1 you can complete the velocity triangle at the outlet by drawing the third side starting from the tail of the uh, vr1 to the tip of u1 which will give you v1 that is the absolute velocity of the jet at the outlet and the angle that this absolute velocity makes with the direction of uh, motion of the wave at the outlet is marked as beta which is the jet angle at the outlet all these terminologies are same as that part we have seen in the case of a single moving wave. Now coming to the inlet velocity triangle we can find the component of this absolute velocity along the tangential direction as well as in the radial direction. The component of V along the tangential is tangential direction is known as velocity of wall at the inlet and component of V along the radial direction is known as the velocity of flow and these are represented as Vw and Vf respectively. The same can be done at the outlet also. The component of V1 along the tangential direction which will be in the negative x direction that is Vw1 and this is the case when beta is less than 90 degree and the corresponding radial component of V1 is represented as Vf1. So this completes the inlet velocity triangle and the outlet velocity triangle respectively. So inlet velocity triangle consists of V, U and the closing side is Vr. Component of V along the tangential direction is Vw. Component of V along the radial direction is Vf. Jet angle at inlet is alpha and the vane angle at the inlet is theta. At the outlet Vr1 is tangential to the vane and it makes an angle phi with the tangential velocity U1. The third side of the triangle gives you absolute velocity V1 and components of V1 along the radial and tangential direction are Vf1 and Vw1 respectively. Phi is the vane angle at outlet and beta is the vane uh, jet angle at the outlet respectively. With these velocity triangles, now we know what are the tangential components of velocities at the inlet and outlet. So let us see how do we calculate the tangential momentum. Tangential momentum is equal to mass flow rate multiplied by tangential velocity. So in this case mass flow rate can be written as W by G therefore tangential momentum at the inlet is given by W by G into the tangential component of velocity at the inlet which we get from the inlet velocity triangle as Vw. So W by G into Vw is the tangential momentum at the inlet. Similarly at the outlet the mass flow rate is W by G and tangential component of velocity is Vw1 but in this case since Vw1 is in the negative x direction we need to conserve the negative sign. So tangential momentum at the outlet is minus of W by G into Vw1. And uh, we have seen earlier that angular momentum is equal to tangential momentum into the radius of rotation. At the inlet we know what is the tangential momentum W by G into Vw and radius of rotation at the inlet is capital R. At the outlet we have seen what is the tangential momentum and the radius of rotation is R1. Accordingly the angular momentum at the inlet and the outlet can be written as W by G into Vw into R at the inlet and minus W by G into Vw1 into R1 at the outlet. But remember in this case uh, W by G is the mass flow rate, mass flowing per unit time. Therefore angular momentum what we are calculating is angular momentum per unit time. Now from the impulse momentum principle or from the torque and angular momentum, torque is equal to rate of change of angular momentum that is inlet angular momentum minus outlet angular momentum. Inlet angular momentum is W by G into Vw into R minus outlet angular momentum is minus of W by G into Vw1 R1. That gives us the expression the torque exerted in this case is equal to W by G which is a common term let us take that outside. So if we take W by G outside it is W by G into Vw R and minus of minus becomes plus. So plus Vw1 R1 W by G into Vw into R plus Vw1 into R1 this is the case when beta is less than 90 degree. Thus the rate of change of angular momentum gives us an expression torque is equal to W by G into Vw R plus Vw1 R1. 
once we calculate torque the next step is to calculate the work done per unit time that is the power we have seen earlier that the power is the force multiplied by the uh, tangential velocity of the wave but in this case when we are talking about the rotational tendency the work done for the rotation is given by work done per unit time or the power delivered to the wheel is given by torque into angular velocity instead of force into the tangential velocity now we are using torque into angular velocity torque is w by g into vwr plus vw1 r1 angular velocity is omega so in this expression you can see these terms r multiplied by omega and r1 multiplied by omega we have seen earlier that the tangential velocity is given by the radius of rotation multiplied by omega therefore r multiplied by omega can be written as u that is tangential velocity at the inlet r1 multiplied by omega can be written as u1 that is the tangential velocity at the outlet making no substitution this equation can be converted in to the form work done per unit time or the power developed is equal to w by g into vw u plus vw1 u1 remember this is the case when beta is less than 90 degrees that is what the diagram we have drawn also this mass flow rate w by g can also be written as mass density rho multiplied by the discharge q or rho into area into velocity where a is the area of the jet and thus in the case of a radial flow vein where water enters the wheel wheel tangentially at one end and flows through the wheel radially the power delivered by the water to the wheel is given by w by g into vw u plus vw1 u1 and when we remove when we recollect the velocity triangle what we have drawn in that case beta was less than 90 degree when beta is less than 90 degree vw1 that is the tangential component of v1 will be towards the negative x direction therefore the v uh, the sin minus need to be attached to this vw1 that is how this has become plus vw1 let us see the case when beta is greater than 90 degree when beta is greater than 90 degree this velocity triangle takes the form like this v1 will be towards the right and therefore the component of v1 along the tangential direction will be towards the or along the positive x direction or the vw1 changes its direction and accordingly the sign of vw1 in this expression also changes therefore instead of plus vw1 it now becomes minus vw1 the third case we will see when vw when beta is equal to 90 degree when beta is 90 degree that is when the absolute velocity of the jet leaves the vein radially at the outlet which is one of the common case in case of hydraulic machines or especially in case of transistor turbine the flow leaves the vein radially at the outlet that is beta is equal to 90 degree when beta is equal to 90 degree the flow is uh, absolutely or completely along the radial direction and it has no tangential component of vw1 velocity of world at the outlet is equal to 0 in that case the expression for power is reduced to w by g into vw u so taking these three cases we can write the generic expression for the power delivered to the wheel as power is equal to or work done per unit time is equal to w by g into vw u plus or minus vw1 u1 depending upon the jet angle at the outlet we need to choose the appropriate sign here thus to summarize what we have seen in this lecture we have discussed the case of a jet entering a series of curved vanes tangentially and the vanes are mounted radially on a wheel this changes the case into uh, that of a radial flow wheel and in the in that case rather than the impulse momentum principle we consider the rotational tendency produced by the water that is flowing through the vein and that is expressed in terms of torque so the torque in this case is given by w by g that is mass flow rate per mass flow rate into vwr plus vw1 r1 
or I can say the VW R plus or minus VW1 R1 and the corresponding power generated is given by W by G into VW U plus or minus VW1 U1 and in this case the mass flow rate W by G can also be written as rho A V where rho is the mass density of the fluid, A is the area of the jet and V is the absolute velocity of the jet at the inlet. And in this expression VW and VW1 are the velocity of world at the inlet and the outlet respectively which are the tangential components of the absolute velocity of the jet at the inlet and the outlet. U and U1 are the tangential velocity of the vane at the inlet and the outlet respectively. We will continue this discussion in the next lecture. Thank you.